Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this special edition of What a Horse. It's uh, I'm here with my buddy Chase Williams, and Chase, we're just getting together today because of questions that. I've had several calls from the Saddlebreds. I know you have. Yes. Uh, we've talked about the Arabians, the Morgans, and everything else. But a lot of people just wondering what's going on with other industries. Mm -hmm. And the one question I keep getting from one Saddlebred trainer is, they're going to come after us too, aren't they? They already are. And. Uh, my question was exactly what you said. They already are. You just don't realize it. I think that's the major problem with the saddlebreds. Some of them think they're above it, beyond it, or whatever. I wouldn't go quite that far, Jerry. I think the issue is, like right here we're seeing some, I don't know if these are Morgans, some are Morgans, but this is a, the biggest uh, the speed rack in there. Um, a lot of like the biggest division right now within the saddlebred. And there's my favorite, the the Hackney ponies. The biggest uh, in the saddlebred business right now, and there's the cobs, is the um, the hunter under saddle. I think there's four main points that people need to understand why other breeds will not sustain or survive the current HPA process. What the Tennessee walking horse industry is actually fighting for, and why it's so important for other breeds to join in this lawsuit. Because as, as the great Mark Ferris said at our celebration, the Tennessee walking horse industry is not asking for no inspections. We're asking for fair and science-based inspections that any horse would pass if they're compliant with the law. As we've seen at Saddlebred shows this year, Dr. McHenry allowed horses to show that by the current rules should have been disqualified. It's on the video here. This horse is clearly moving, clearly snatching his foot away. Now, but I don't. That horse showed. Yeah, that horse that got horse to show. Showed. Now, that one did too. This one too. Now, these horses I know are not in violation of the spirit of the law because I, I know the trainers of those horses, I know they're not. But the current USDA interpretation of the Horse Protection Act demands that that horse be turned down and information taken, and it That's didn't right. happen. So, you know, recently we saw that the American, the American um, Arab Horse Association said, we're gonna comply with all of the current regulations effective February 1st. Well, I hate to tell our friends in the other breeds, but you have supposed to have been complying with this since day one in 1970. And the reason why you've not been complied with it is because back when it was American Horse Shows Incorporated, when we all showed together, they didn't want to get into the inspection game. That's why the walking horse industry left. They weren't kicked out. They weren't booted out. They left and formed the regulatory committee, right. which then became the National Horse Show Commission, which is now splintered off into other other organizations. What the walking horse industry is fighting for is a future for all of us. And you need to understand HSUS and, the, and uh, ASPCA and PETA are behind the driving. They are driving this forward with the PAST Act as a legislative measure, and they are behind the rulemaking. The rulemaking is going to apply to everyone across the board. Everybody needs to understand but that— But it already does apply to them. Correct, but it's going to be enforced. Right, and, and that's where the problem comes in. They have not even been turning in what, when, when all this started, the USDA said there's no sense in inspecting them. They do not soar their horses. The documents However, were never turned in. That's right. If the documents had been turned in for the last 50 years, they would have known they had been soared. And the. And the people that are responsible for that not happening is USCF. USCF is in full, they know who's doing what because they administer the drug testing. They administer uh, warm-up ring stewards. So they know what's going on in, in the other breeds. But the USCF has decided to be this barrier of information. So the USDA this year decided that they were just going to go take a walk. And what they found, according to them, was very disturbing. My sources at USDA confirmed to me that the report that Kerry McHenry filed, the field report, was very, very damning. Now, here's the issue. 
there, the, the spirit of the law has an element of fairness to it. It is almost unfair to expect a group of people that have never had to deal with this to just go pop quiz. On the other hand, ignorance of the law is not a defense. So the other breeds need to understand they are coming for you. They have been since day one. And the only thing, the, the, the toothpick that's standing in the way of this boulder is the Tennessee walking horse industry. It is, it is it. This, these rules, these regulations are designed to be the extinction of the American show horse, regardless of breed or discipline. And people need to understand this. They need to stop throwing stones and they need to understand that if we fall, if the Tennessee walking horse industry fails in its endeavor to bring good government and fair and science-based inspections, none of you, none of you will be having horse shows after February 1st, 2025. We are the domino. Yes. We're the one. And, and that's what I've talked to this friend of mine that's a saddlebred trainer, and I explained to him. They should have been following the rules all along. Well, they were, they, follow, they were following the rules as told to them by USCF. Yeah, the, the issue here is the United States Equestrian Federation. But they're the ones that's doing the cover-up. Correct. They're and not following the letter of the law. That's correct. They're going around it. That's correct. Now they're going to have to follow it. Well, they, they, they have they to. said in that letter that the Arabian sent out, he said, uh, uh, Stan Morey, he said, that the HPA had changed the new rules. And, he, and the only thing he pointed out was the 30 days of notification before a show. That's the only new thing that there is, because a lot of shows do not, quote, you know, let it be known 30 days. That's the only requirement that's changed. Okay, so when the Horse Protection Act was in Pope, when it was passed into law, it gave initially the USDA the inspecting authority, which they have the authority to oversee right. the inspections. They realized, okay, we don't have enough manpower, we don't have enough personnel, we don't have enough time to go to all these horse shows. Thus, the HIO system was amended and added in too. So what the HIO does is it acts as a middleman between show management and the government. So what's happening, show management is who turns you down. Right. Period into the of the discussion, they do it through their HIO. What the government's wanting to do with this rulemaking? Okay, right now, t uh, inspection fee on horses what thirty dollars? Right. And then it's and then uh, and then you get every additional inspection. It's a little cheaper, but that initial one's thirty dollars. Well, it, it, wait, that's on the flat shot. Okay. It's additional flat shot. Okay. Uh, the only problem is that initially. The USDA was supposed to oversee the inspections. Yeah, they weren't supposed to be picking right. horses' feet up. Then they decided to get into it, and now they have gone so far that they keep adding to the HPA with mm -hmm. a lot of violations. And I think this is what's caused the big disturbance, especially with some of the saddlebreds, is the different violations they are finding now have nothing to do with the limb of a horse. Correct. We're going to get into that in just a second. I mean, it, it gets so, crazy. so what, what's basically going is the USDA is through rulemaking is saying we're not going to do HIOs anymore. We're going to have HPIs, horse protection inspectors. And they're going to have to use USCF to do it because they don't have the manpower. They don't have the resources or the budget to hire 2,500 new HPIs. Mm -hmm. So they're just going to put everybody under USCF. And USCF is not a friend to the saddle seat world. It's not a friend to the quarter horse world. I mean, you you go look on their Facebook pages during the World's Championship Horse Show, during our show, during Congress, and there's tons of people, mostly from other countries, that are bashing these divisions. And this is ridiculous. The American show horse is made up of so many beautiful elements from western uh, stock seat to, to parts of dressage to saddle seat to English hunt seat. And all of these horses have a, by right have a right to exist. We're producing the best animals we've ever, ever produced. I mean, at this year's celebration, they turned down a horse for a chest rub. He, when he cantered, he knocked himself in the chest. That's not an HPA violation. They, they turned down a horse with a rub up on his hip. That's not an HPA violation. They were turning horses down for in-show ring injuries, which are not uh, covered under the HPA. Plus, they're taking tail rubs on your uh, tail brakes if it rubbed up. 
the back of the horse. That is not an HPA. The HPA says it is unlawful to soar any horse on any limb. It doesn't say walking horse. It says any horse, okay? Any horse, whether it's walking, trotting, or otherwise moving, that is in the statute. Please go look it up and read it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. The VMOs in the field are starting to take liberties with this, and they're acting as judge, jury, and executioner. Like right before the trainer show this year, the recently disgraced Dr. Aaron Reimer that just quit because he's going to get hauled up in front of a government oversight committee, and if he thinks Thinks resigning is going to change that. No, he's going to have to give testimony. And I he's hope so. He's going to have I to. Truly, I truly do. That's one of the main things that several of us have talked about. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've, uh, if he does. I've spoken with uh, uh, staff members on the committee, and they want to hear his transcribed interview because there's questions. Were you targeting horses? Were you targeting specific trainers? And if so, who told you? That's where did that be, where did that going to be it if where did you. that directive come from well, see, the whole thing is this and, and this is what it boils down to to me everybody else may be different when you falsify information that's why I've always said that well you can't sue a BMO well because they're doing their job yes you can you can't you can't, you can't sue them individually yes you can you can sue them totally no I'm, I beg your pardon this, this is a fact you cannot sue them individually for doing what they're paid to do, their job. You can charge them. You can charge them with what they're doing, and that's falsifying the, the government documents, which is a felony by law. Yeah. And it's in their statutes that you cannot do that. And they've been found multiple times. Frank Eichler, when he did the research, remember 68 different times? Oh, yeah. He found where they falsified. When they tell and say a tail rub, is a HPA violation? It's not. That's a lie. That's a felony. That's what I hope they get them on. Well, I mean, I, I was under the understanding that you could sue any federal employee in federal court if they are operating outside the jurisdiction of their job. They, their job is to inspect the horses. Their job and, is to inspect the horses, by the way the law reads, not right. interject their own personal opinion into it. But when do you separate the two? That's the question. I'll, I'll, gra I'll grant you, that's, you that that's point. That's the question. I will grant you, you that point. You cannot, it's hard to separate. It's kind of like our judges when they're judging a horse show. You cannot tell what that man's opinion is. It is his opinion. You may not agree with it. But it's his opinion. But his, if, it's, if that's truly his opinion, you can't question it. If he sits there and says it is, then... Well, I mean, we caught Dr. Adams, Amy Adams, this very year, yeah. changing a ticket from scar rule to sensitivity. Yeah. Okay, so which is it? Uh -huh. So what the other breeds need to under this is this whole issue is not precipitated on a shoe. It's not, they're not looking for sore horses because they're, they're not. And I understand people are going to throw back in my face the recent HSUS video that that video footage is two years old and the individuals in that are currently already serving a that, suspension. That's what gets me so it's, why, uh, it's moot. Why did the Humane I mean, Society but, of the United States sit but, there for two years? Here we go. We're, we're looking at the back feet, feet, which, yes, technically you can do, but why is she looking a minute ago? Under the why tail. was she looking under the tail? Okay. Where the flashlight. Dr. Rebecca over here is looking, mm -hmm. was looking under the tail. That is not an HPA violation. That is not in their purview. Their purview is the limb of the horse. The okay. limb of the horse. They are inventing anything and everything that they want to do and, and using that against us. And this is what the other breeds have to look at. Mm -hmm. and here's the major thing. It's kind of like back in 216 when we had so many horses turned down for scar root. Frank Eichler took it upon himself. And I'm, I'm, I'm pointing to Frank a lot because people do not give that man justice for what he's done. Oh, he's a genius. He's, he's a genius legal mind. There was. 29 horses taken to Rise and Star, and I might add this. He, he fed them, he watered them, he had their stalls clean, he had them taken out, checked, everything. He paid the whole tab on this to have these horses inspected. 58 of them turned down at the celebration mm -hmm. for Scar Road after they inspected. 58 horses, or 29 horses, they had 58 results, every one of them negative. Mm -hmm. That is what the walking horse faces when we go to an inspection 
where the USDA is present. I mean, what we're seeing right now is perfect. Yeah, all and, of those were turned down and, for Scarlet. Yes, I, I know. I went around to each barn and took the video of them before they, right before they went over to be checked. And every mm -hmm. one of them is clean as a whistle. But here's, when you look at this and you see other other breeds, and, and like my friend, he, he's a he's a celebrated. He said, "Well, Jerry," he said, "this is going to be devastating to us because, and this is what so many of our owners go through." What I'm fixing to say. You work all week. You pay your training bill mm -hmm. to your trainer. You take care of your horse. You have it checked by the vet. You pay the tooth fairy to come and check his teeth. You do all of this to make sure that horse is in perfect condition. You take it to a horse show, which costs additional money according to where you're going. Mm -hmm. And then you get there and everybody comes all dressed up to show and the government says, your horse cannot show. And they say, ask the trainer, why? Well, they say he's scarred or he's too sensitive or whatever, said he can't show. So now that owner loses all of that. Oh, yeah. And we're talking about thousands of dollars. We're not talking about a couple of hundred bucks. You know, I'm glad you brought that up. So, so the, the American equine industry, right. from kids' birthday ponies to trail horses up to the very top Grand Prix jumpers, is something to the tune of $60 billion a year. That's it. 1.7 million jobs across the country. 1.3 million homes have something to do with a horse. This rule, bastardizing the HPA into something that it's not, puts all of that in jeopardy. So yeah, the total cost of these things to our national economy is upwards of 60 billion. No, I take that back, it's 122 billion. Yeah. It's 122 billion. It's 60 million in Bedford County alone. In 11 days, that the celebration generates in Shelbyville, Tennessee, somewhere, I think it's $60 million was, of economic impact. That was a few years ago, but it's still, it's still well between, up, upward of 50 million yeah. that, that it raises. And, and that's because a lot of the actions by the USDA, people, the, the entries, even though they're, they've gradually come back up, since but the 60s and early 70s they've gone down drastically oh yeah i mean we actually this is the the best attended celebration entries wise yeah. in 10 years and it yeah. was a good show i mean they were turning down the, the government was at our show six nights the whole show the first thursday friday saturday and the second thursday friday saturday they turned down on average 34 horses a night for nothing i think they had 179 total yeah, they got. over 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 uh, six nights, they came in with an agenda. And listen, folks, if you don't think that they're going to show up at your little horse show and do the same thing, the right, I mean, the cost of what this is going to cost now when you're hiring HPIs versus DQPs could be upwards of thousands of dollars, $3,000. I mean, how many of your little fair charities horse shows, they, not, can't, they can't afford it. Well, the charities wouldn't make any money. No. Because now we, we fight. We fight for sponsors. Believe me, I put on enough shows. I know getting sponsors <laughs> is hard. Like pulling teeth from a running boar hog. It ain't easy. But all that money, you, you have a lot of spend outs that you have to spend, a lot of cost. And that hurts the charity. Mm -hmm. So you, you, people need to think about that. The charities are going to suffer. But what really gets me is this. And and I've talked to my saddlebred fan, a uh, friend, and and it is, uh, I do not understand why the other breeds are not joining in. But a lot of it has to do with things like this letter that the director of the Arabian put out mm -hmm. that now we're going to do this because of this they ought to be helping us can we show that letter on the screen is that possible I, I Mr. Don't Producer? Know whether, I don't know whether that would be ethical or not because that letter wasn't sent to us <laughs> you know what I mean possible. but I mean he, he's seen it and, and things he said in it are true he he said that they was now going to have to do this they should have been doing it all along but instead of him backing what they want to do, which is going to cost him, mm -hmm. they're trying to hide again. And that's what really gets me, is they're trying to hide behind the fact that they did not follow the letter of the law for 50 well, years. I, I, I don't think 
that it's the breeds that didn't do it. I'm going to put this back on on USCF because USCF has a, had a job to do. They had a job to do. So I mean, you know, why is it important for other breeds to join in our lawsuit? Okay, if if we're the new norm now is inspections. That's the new norm. And do you want inspections that are based in science that, that that give you the benefit of innocence? Or do you want inspections that are subjective? You're bound to fail before you even get up there and you lose your industry, you lose your breed, you lose your horse. I mean, it's just that simple. We are not fighting to break the law. We are fighting to enforce the law as it is initially written and as we know it will work. The HPA, by and large, if you follow it, it works. It keeps the cheaters out. We know this because the USDA's own numbers from 1970 to now bear that out at a 96% compliancy rate. You can't get that in any other area in agriculture. So my appeal to anyone who watches this, please take off your blinders. Please stop paying attention to the BS that HSUS puts out because they're paying people to go dig up stuff that isn't relevant to what's going on right now. We are they fighting really for you. Care. They what, don't care. They don't care. They just what, want to raise money. What I will tell people, is listen to this ad at the end of the show. We, we're, we're out of time, but I want you to listen to what Mike Inman says because joining fast in this battle will help us in the end. Yeah, and I appreciate you having me on today to, for this special. And you know, well, I appreciate you coming, and I hope we woke a few people up to where they'll pay attention to what's actually happening. You know, I, I hope the takeaway from this special is unified together, we can provide a fair and prosperous future for our horse. But if we remain divided along breed lines, they're going to pick us off one by one. So please, for the love of your horse, get involved today and let's ensure a bright future for America's show horse. Thank you so much for having me. We'll try. We'll do the best. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you this week on the Water Horse Show. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released. This is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3. And be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go.